Medieval festivals are a great thing. Beautiful people in handsome costumes, fragrant and friendly, show how men and women lived in the Middle Ages. There are entertaining performances, delicacies from the grill, music, and all this preferably takes place on a mild summer weekend. Oh, how beautiful it must have been in the Middle Ages, many a visitor thinks and dreams of a nostalgic life in a castle or a palace. Bet that these reveries are immediately over after you've seen this video. Shockingly and unembellished, we clear up with the romantic ideas about times long ago and confront you now with the bitter and sometimes even cruel reality of these people. Before we start with this enlightening journey into the Middle Ages, we would like to ask you for a contribution. Leave us a comment after this video and share your opinion with us. How do you like it? What do you think about the topic? And would you like to share? If you are our subscriber, we'll reward your post with a heart and pin it to the top where everyone will read it first. Here we go with one of the scariest errors in human history. 1. Stench and Hygiene the biggest problem in terms of cleanliness and hygiene in castles and palaces was the lack of running water. Some castles had wells, but they were often not inexhaustible and obtaining water was tedious. In winter, wells could be frozen for days and weeks even. Cleaning, cleanliness, and hygiene were not considered very important in the Middle Ages anyways. Waste often laid around on the ground or were simply dumped over the castle walls. It worked similarly with other human waste. Toilets were protrusions in walls and feces ended up around the fortress, where they stagnated. Later, simply wooden benches with a hole and buckets or vats underneath were common. Privacy was non-existent. Ordinary people did their business in the presence of others, while the more noble residents separated their toilets with a curtain. In the Middle Ages, washing, brushing one's teeth, and doing one's hair was hardly as important as they are today. There were bathtubs, but they were often used every few weeks or days, and because of the chronic water shortage, dozens of people often shared one bath. The people, as well as the castles, probably smelled in the Middle Ages in a way that would be very unpleasant to our noses today. 2. Narrowness Castles and palaces often seem huge, but they were once also stomping grounds for a large number of people. In castles, nobles often had spacious rooms, while servants lived in cramped quarters. In castles, space for everyone was often scarce. Servants shared rooms, people shared beds, or even slept on the floor. Due to the confinement, social tensions in the castle may have been extreme. 3. Dungeons and Prisons Notorious are, of course, also the dark dungeons under the castles and fortresses. Not only enemies were kept there, often members of the court or rebellious servants ended up here. If individual people fell out of line, became criminal or conspicuous, they were either expelled from the castle or imprisoned. Some people are said to have been forgotten, to have gone mad after long isolation or even tortured, or to have been nibbled by rats. Torture methods served at the time the chastisement, one assumed in the Middle Ages, namely that physical pain helped drive out the devil or immoralities from humans. 4. Rats and Vermin Castles were probably teeming with rats, and other vermin, such as cockroaches, ants, and beetles, were able to enter castles unhindered and make themselves comfortable. Inside the castle, some farm animals like chickens, goats, or even pigs were often kept partly free-running or in enclosures. The excrements of the chickens, but also of the rats, were lying around everywhere, a circumstance which was of course an invitation for further vermin, and so the vicious circle took its course. 5. Diseases We know today that rats were the great unknown factor in the outbreak of the plague. In the Middle Ages, this disease killed half the population of Europe. It was also considered by ignorance about hygiene, ways of spreading diseases and rats. But not only epidemics made life difficult for the people, also normal everyday ailments such as arthritis, colds, dental problems, inflammations, skin rashes, or venereal diseases. Since there were almost no doctors or medical professionals, people helped themselves with home remedies, bizarre tinctures, spells of questionable healers, or, if nothing else helped, also with prayers. These things often helped only moderately. The mortality rate was higher in the Middle Ages than at any other time. 
blame for it were the already mentioned facts of the narrowness, the lack of hygiene, missing water, and often also malnutrition of humans and too much work. Which brings us to the next point. 6. Working until you drop. People in the Middle Ages did not even dream of an eight-hour day and six weeks of vacation. A worker belonged to the lord of the castle or the nobleman of the region. As soon as young people were strong enough, they started to work, and this continued for a lifetime until they got sick or dropped dead. The working day usually began at sunrise and, depending on the task, ended late at night. Payment was, of course, none, the consideration for a lifelong service being a roof over one's head, shelter, and food. 7. Darkness and Cold Of course, people in the Middle Ages did not have electricity either. That is, they had no artificial lighting. Candles, oil lamps, fires, and torches were their only source of light after sunset. While these had their uses, they also had drawbacks. Often there was not enough light sources, they stank and filled rooms with smoke. The smoke could escape through the openings of the building, but at the same time the cold came in through these hatches and windows. Glass was also not yet available in the Middle Ages. If you wanted fresh air, you had to put up with sub-zero temperatures in winter. Heating was only available in the rooms of the highest nobility, and this consisted of an open fireplace. If no one added wood, or there was none left, it was bitterly cold in the castle. The servants usually slept close to the earth, in straw or on the floor. Anyone who has ever been in a castle knows that these buildings are drafty and icy cold to this day. The thick stone walls and dampness alone often make these buildings a very uninhabitable and ultimately unhealthy environment. 8. Fires Devastating fires broke out regularly in castles, palaces, and medieval settlements. The culprits were the many open fires. In addition, there was also the custom of covering floors with straw and rushes to cover the excrement of rats and domestic animals and to provide a little warmth. Simple buildings in settlements were built entirely out of wood and covered with thatch or straw. Once on fire, fires quickly spread to entire settlements, destroying homes within minutes to hours. 9. Poor Nutrition While knights, princes, kings, and emperors often feasted decadently, for normal people, there was usually only the simplest food. Bread, water, maybe once in a while a few scraps of the noble reverie, an apple, and beer. In addition to the meager and often inadequate food, people also had a problem with drinking. Clean water was a rarity and often not available at all. Consequently, people drank beer, and gladly in the morning. Alcohol in the morning also had the effect of being nourishing and to a certain extent invigorating. People also drank to suppress hunger and to better endure their hardship and suffering. So today, you can assume that in a medieval castle, almost all people were already drunk or at least woozy by noon. 10. Wars and Sieges Now you may think, who on earth did such a horrible life in the stinking and unhygienic castle when there were also picturesque medieval villages with craftsmen and nice village communities? Here, too, we must unfortunately immediately take away the illusion of the medieval market in the 21st century. In fact, the situation in the real Middle Ages was such that peasants, settlers, and craftsmen living outside fortified castles, palaces, or towns had a dangerous existence. Marauding gangs, vagrants, hostile principalities, the Huns, or one's own neighbors could break in, steal, rape, and murder at any time. The everyday life of people in this era was anything but tranquil and safe. Therefore, people often felt more comfortable behind thick walls and gladly and gratefully accepted poor living conditions, better than being exposed to constant dangers outside. Life as a servant in the castle was certainly no bed of roses, but often even easier than that of the peasants. Among the people themselves, there was also envy, distrust, and rivalry. You must also remember that the Middle Ages were the heyday of the Inquisition. The church exercised strict violence, and anyone who stood out quickly ran the risk of ending up at the stake, or at least in the torture chamber. Social and religious fears, phobias, superstitions, defamation, and slander were the order of the day. 11. Social Constraints Oh, how beautiful was that movie in which the simple farmer's boy rose to knighthood through his courage 
and was then allowed to marry the noble princess. But we only know that from Hollywood, because reality in the Middle Ages was once again quite different. Those who were born poor usually remained so for the rest of their lives. Estates, which resemble the castles that still exist in India today, regulated social status, traffic rights, and of course, marriages. Even in the lowest estates, marriages were usually based on material and security considerations. After wars, there was usually a clear surplus of women in the population. Women who did not find a husband end up as lowly servants in brothels or simply left to their fate. Women were considered worthless in the Middle Ages and other eras because they could not be used as soldiers or hard workers. The only purpose of womanhood was often seen in the reproductive capacity, that is, to produce as many male offspring as possible, who could then work, rule, or fight again. This fate met not only simple country women, but also nobles. Even princesses, queens, and empresses often had hardly any rights, lived locked up and isolated in their castles and palaces, and had to deal with strict social conventions. Everyday life was regulated by court ceremonial. No one was allowed to speak openly or aloud. Lower people were not allowed to get too close to higher people or look them in the eye. People must have been incredibly tense and depressed. Certainly, quite a few people suffered from severe mental disorders in this age. Suicides and even natural deaths before reaching the age of 30 were not uncommon. What do you think about this era of humanity now? Do you think there was anything special about that time, or are you just glad to be living in the 21st century? Let us know and share your valuable opinion with us in the comments. We look forward to your contributions and wish you a great time. See you next time at Hidden Worlds.